Hello and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. The other day we discussed my new favorite cordless die grinder and I told you how much I enjoyed this and we talked a little bit about air die grinders and mentioned corded die grinders which I don't currently have at the moment. Somebody had asked in the comments about one of these things and this is the Dremel tool. Almost everybody's probably heard of a Dremel tool. A lot of us own a Dremel tool. And it's very similar to a die grinder in the sense that it is a rotary action. It has a little chuck or collet that holds rotary bits and burrs and wire brushes and all sorts of different things. And they go around in a circle, kind of like a dentist drill does. But there is a big difference. And that big difference is really size and power. You are never going to get the work out of a Dremel that you do out of one of these. But should you have one in your shop? Are they useful tools? Well, we'll discuss that. The other thing some people have asked about, let me zoom out here, is what this little arm right over my head is and what's hanging on that arm. Some people have commented that it looked like some tool or some other tool that it isn't. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit today and discuss rotary tools in general. So what makes rotary tools so good is the variety of grinding stones, wire brushes, steel burrs or cutters, and some of them are very high dollar, very nice cutters that will cut. These will cut annealed tool steel, and I can use these for shaping the inside of an ax eye. And lots of things you can do with stuff like this. You can get little cutoff wheels for doing precision trimming. And you can get similar bits and burrs and discs and things that fit smaller shaft rotary tools. The big die grinder is a quarter inch shank and the smaller one like a Dremel tool is an eighth inch shank. That tells you a lot about how durable these are. These are small. This has a little sanding drum on it I've been using to sand the very top of some axe handles down just to kind of clean it up after cutting the wedge off. Very useful tool for the, that but it is never going to do the kind of work that I do with this. I would never think about using a Dremel or other rotary tool for refining the inside of an axe or an ad's eye or something like that. You would spend $50 in little sanding drums just trying to pull that off and you'd probably still be frustrated by the time the day was over. Now just because I wouldn't use a Dremel for big heavy work doesn't mean I don't use one. Like I say I was using this for doing a little bit of dressing up of the wood on an axe handle and it's very handy for that kind of thing. One of the advantages of the Dremel is that they sell Dremels and bits for them all over the place. Your local home center, department store, very likely to have that kind of stuff. And you frequently get them in a little box like this that just has all sorts of stuff in it. And like any kit that has everything you'll ever want, it usually has a bunch of stuff you never use and not enough of the stuff you do want. I don't even remember what some of this stuff is used for. It does have a little flex shaft and this is a nice little lightweight flex shaft. You mount one end in the Dremel tool and then you'd only have to hold this and you don't have to hold the tool and that can be handy sometimes. And it's got a little, it's got a little power planer. I've actually used this for trimming up a door and it works. Not much for metalworking though. The, the kind of things that you tend to use in metalworking are the little grinding discs, the little buffers and things like that that are all too small for the kind of work I do most of the time. But if you're a knife maker or a jeweler or doing something like this, some of this stuff might come in handy. So I don't actually keep this in the blacksmith shop. I keep this in the wood shop. I'm more likely to use it for household stuff. And I actually have some little router bits and I have a little Dremel router that uses little tiny router bits almost never use it but I needed it for something and it came in handy for that one thing and of course it has little burrs very much like the ones I use in the die grinder just much smaller so if you're doing some detail work on something these might come in handy. We talked about the flex shaft that goes on the Dremel and how handy that could be but the Dremel is still sort of underpowered and not really meant for continuous all-day use. They make much better flex shaft tools that are meant to be used all day every day and that's what this thing hanging up behind me is. This thing is a Fordham flex shaft tool. 
And this is a handy tool if you need it. It has the motor that hangs up here. And you can hang this however you want to, but I put it on a swing arm so I can swing it out of the way if it, I'm not using it. And quite frankly, I don't use it that often. I bought this when I thought I was going to be a knife maker, and this was going to be able to do little detail work around knife guards and on handles, things like that. But since I almost never do knives anymore, I almost never use this anymore. There are times that it comes in handy, so I keep it around. I haven't been willing to part with it yet, but it gets used probably about four hours a year, whereas the die grinder probably gets used about four hours every two weeks. But it's quite handy, and these hand pieces are interchangeable. You can take it off and put longer ones, lighter ones, different shapes on there. Just depends on what you're trying to do with it. Very popular tool with jewelers, people that are doing precision work. It's designed to work. You can take the shaft apart and grease it so it's easy to maintain, and I'm not sure if you can do that with the one for the Dremel or not. And unlike the Dremel that just has an on-off switch, this thing, when you turn it on, then goes to a foot pedal. And then it's variable speed just based on how hard you step on the foot pedal. So that makes it really quite a nice tool. It can go fairly fast or really slow to do real detailed work if you want it to. The only problem I have in the shop with the foot pedal is I don't have a dedicated place where I just use this. And I frequently end up stepping on the foot pedal or kicking it around. So I end up unplugging it and putting the foot pedal up on a shelf somewhere because it does just plug into the power cord for the unit. And you can take this and you can put it wherever you need to. But that means you got to get it out and set it up. And since that's kind of a hassle, that's one of the reasons I don't use it all that much. I suppose someday once I get all of the stuff done in the shop and get everything put away the way I really want it to, the little file cabinet that lives under my bench might go away. Maybe the foot pedal will live under there where it's not in the walk path anymore. But for now, it just hangs on the wall. It's there if I need it. Out of the way if I don't. Now, as long as we're having a discussion on tools that use little rotary stones and cutters and brushes and things like that, there's one other tool that I thought we would talk about, but it's not one you hold in your hand. And that would be this thing. This is a Red Wing dental lathe. This is the kind of thing that an office that makes bridge work and dentures or something like that might use to clean up some of the stuff, polish things, stuff like that. Not exactly sure because I've never been a dentist. And these are available sometimes on the used market. You find them on eBay. They're relatively expensive there. I can't imagine how much they cost if you try to buy one new. But it uses all sorts of different things. I've got a pointed mandrel on this end that will take buffing wheels and things like that. That's very convenient to use. I also should note that this is two speed. So it's got a high speed and a low. And I don't remember what they are, but they're way slower than your average die grinder or the high speed on a Dremel tool. So you can get away with using things like wire brushes and larger wheels. But one of the things that makes this thing so cool is this arm right here is a clutch that disengages the wheel, opens the, the chuck on that. You can take that one out. You can put this one in and you can go right back to work without ever turning the motor off. You can put whatever you need in there. I can use sanding drums in this. I can use rubber bonded abrasives which are really nice for finishing some things really fine. Just really a neat tool. Not one that I think everybody should have but I like it. You can use anything that fits in a die grinder, except that I probably wouldn't put a cutoff disc in here because I think this would be a really dangerous way to use a cutoff disc. Even though it would fit. So I hope that explains some of the difference between things like a die grinder and a Dremel and a flex shaft tool and why you might want one versus the other. But to specifically answer the original viewer's question of why use a die grinder, why not use a Dremel? It's really just a matter of having more power in the die grinder, larger stones, bigger cutters, able to do a whole lot more work a whole lot faster. While the Dremel tool is useful, it's more of a precision tool. So I wouldn't avoid having a Dremel in the shop, but I don't know that I would go out of my way to buy a Dremel if you're looking at doing work that you might be better off using a die grinder for. Die grinder is going to cost you a lot more money than a Dremel. You can buy these anywhere around the holidays that are on sale frequently. If you look online, you can probably find dozens of different kit options that come with all sorts of different burrs and attachments and things like that. 
So a Dremel really is a Barbie doll kind of tool because you got to buy all the accessories. Anyways, I hope that answers your question and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell down there and you'll know when we make new videos. Stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then by all means make time in your day to get out to your shop. Make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.